Alright, welcome to part 5, the final part of rehashing my 20 videos that um, I deleted when I quit. So finally, we're going to talk about racism one more time. Because all of my videos were based on racism to begin with. And I deleted one of my videos that was about racism because I probably got too deep. And then again, I got upset. I got really upset because my mom and everybody in the house wouldn't shut up. They wouldn't let me record. And they was doing all kinds of stuff to prevent me from getting everything done. So when I started making the video, I was honestly talking about how far we come and how far we have to go. Now, we've, we've come a fair amount of time in the last 100 years or so of racism. But what we haven't done is sat down and found a equitable acquaintance solution for solving racism. We haven't found a way to do this shit right. Because here's how racism looks. Right? Everyone on earth don't want to be racist, but don't want to stop racist people from infecting everyone else. And I said this in one of the videos also, that kids, this is the most important video, this is why it's the last video, this is why I'm rehashing it, kids above all else are the people that we need to look to. Because you put kids in a playground, they don't know about their gender differences, I mean they know that one piece sitting down, one piece standing up, they know that, that's like common sense. But they don't know about sexism. They don't know that a girl can't do the things that a boy can do. And I'm totally against believing that bullshit. Because a girl can do just as much as a boy. If not more. If given the fucking chance to do so. And instead of being judged by her gender. and Oh no you can't do that because you're a girl. Bullshit. There's nothing that a girl can't do that a boy can't do. They might have to do it a little bit more finesse wise. But they can still do it. Alright. And I said that because um. Out of risk of um, women getting different types of cancers than men. Because we both can get breast cancer. But women also get uterine cancer. Where we get testicular cancer. It's basically the same shit. But you know. Uh, women's body are genetically built tougher than men. They push a whole nother body out of that motherfucker. So. There's nothing that a woman can't do. That a boy can't do. No. There's nothing that a girl and a boy can't do. But if you look at kids at play. That shit don't matter to them. It doesn't matter that this girl can throw the ball better than the boy. Because they're kids. They don't see that shit until we, the adults who were corrupted by other adults as children, fucking corrupt the next generation of adults. Instead of letting the kids be kids, you know, we instead of letting them um, like their Asian friends or their black friends. And as they get older and start being able to develop boobs and learning what their vaginas and their penises are for. This is when we start corrupting them. You can't date that Asian girl. I don't want no half-breed grandchildren whose skin tone looks like yours, but eyes are slanted. I don't want that shit. Because some Asians have super strong Asian features that are super slanted eyes. And some are super slanted and tiny. And, you know, um, people, they can still be beautiful, but to that racist ancestor or aunt or uncle or parent of yours would say, no, you can't date that person. They look way too Asian for you. No. And then on the flip side, no, I don't want no dark grandchildren. You can't date that black person. And that can come from Asians, whites, and Mexicans. So glad I'm mixed. Anyway, you know, because my family, we don't care. We're, we're mixed. So date whoever the fuck you want. If they make you happy and they're not fucking killing you, selling your body parts or mistreating you or selling your gender out to the highest bidder or doing other things illegal, then we're okay with that. But we also don't raise our kids corrupt. We're a bulk of America. We'll take a good kid and turn them racist. And until we stop doing that, there's always going to be problems amongst the race. And I'm making this video the most important video because of the fucking true fact that when you take five boys and five girls, and let's say two from every ethnicity, all right, you know, or well, let's make it more specific. All right, so you have 
One black boy, one black girl. One Asian girl, one Asian boy. You have one white boy, one a, a one white girl. One Asian girl. I did that already. You get the gist. You know, you get even amount of numbers. You know, from every race. So ten's a a mythological number. I should have did twenty. But either way, you get people from different cultures, and you slap all their kids in a room. Promise you. Unless that kid's been corrupted. Unless that kid has been corrupted. That kid will play with the boys the same way he plays with the girls. That kid will not say bad things about the girls or the boys and they'll just play. There will be not one racist thing said amongst them. Unless that kid has been corrupted by us adults. And that kid will run with these kids and play with these kids and jump rope and throw rocks and all kinds of shit. Being kids. Without one racial thing said, as long as we adults don't corrupt them. Prime example, when I was either in the third grade or my second year in the fourth grade, this girl called me a nigger. I said it. I said it the N-word. This girl called me a nigger. She was a white girl. My white friends no longer talked to me after I punched her in the mouth. I never told my white friends why I punched her in the mouth. In fact, until the principal made me tell him, I never told anybody. I just hit her in the mouth and was going to take my licks, you know. And when the resolve issue got resolved in school, my white friend still didn't talk to me. John and whatever her name is, they both moved to Bruno. Amazingly enough, wherever they are, you know, um, I can't remember the girl's name, but John and her, and the girl's name was Christy or Christine that I hit in the mouth. None of my white friends ever spoke to me anymore after that incident. They spoke to her. They played with her on the playground. But they never spoke to me. And the fact that she called me a nigger was never brought up to them. I never got to meet John and them again because that year when it was over, they again moved to Roanoke. And so I never saw them again. And John, if you're watching... You know, it is a forgivable crime. I don't forgive myself for hitting a girl in the mouth. But the reason why I hit her in the mouth was that she called me a nigger. All heartedly, we were talking. I don't know how or why, but when she came out her mouth, after the talk started, she said something and I said something else. And for the life of me, I don't know why in the hell she came out her mouth and said, <clears throat> James, you're a nigger. And before I knew what happened, the left bullet fired out the chamber and bust her lip. It wasn't something that I intended to do. It was just reflex. Like, BOW! You know? And I put my hand down. She started screaming. Next thing I know, we're in the office. And I think the principal, Mr. Garrett, God rest his soul, because I don't know if he's still alive. But Mr. Garrett was like hounding me. He's like, and I wouldn't break. I would not break. He was like, why did you hit her in the mouth? You got to tell me why you hit her in the mouth. Come on, kid. This is not looking good for you. You haven't been in trouble in your entire school tenure at Berlin Moran, and you won't tell me why you hit this girl in the mouth. You've never been in trouble. Now you're in trouble. Why did you hit her in the mouth? I mean, he was giving me the fifth degree and everything. And I said, look, I can't tell you why she hit me in the mouth because we don't use those words in my house. It's like, well, what did she say? I said, if I use these words, I'm going to get in trouble. You're going to tell my mama, mama going to beat my ass. I don't want my ass whooped. What did she say? I'm going to make sure that your mama don't beat you. Right after he ensured me that my mom won't go whoop my ass, I told him. She called me a nigger. I said, I don't know why she called me a nigger, but she called me a nigger. And I bust her in her damn mouth because she called me a nigger. Now, at my house, we come in different shades of color. Different browns, high yellow and brown. Yeah, and my mom looks white. So, when I punched the girl in the mouth, it was because she called me a nigger. She straight told me to my face that I was a nigger. And my hand versus my logic didn't work out. Logic says, because my mama has always told me, you know, you don't hit girls. And I've always believed that. That you should not hit girls. But that day... That day was the first girl I hit that wasn't kin to me. And I hit her with little force. 
Where was my left hand? I bust her dead in the mouth. Boom! Right smack dead in the mouth. She bled. I didn't mean to do it. At least consciously, I didn't mean to do it. I was raised better than that. Unconsciously, my body had a mind of its own. Bip! And I'm glad it was a left hand and not a right hand. And the right hand, I probably would have killed her. Because I'm right-handed, naturally. But I've trained myself to be left-handed since I was a little kid, too. For martial art purposes. And I told Mr. Garrett, I cried a little bit. And he wiped my tears and said, going back to class. But when it comes time to come home, you and her got to come sit in the office. And this is about the one time that I said my mom truly went to bed for me. Because when they found out what was going on, and they thought my mom was white. And so uh, Mr. Garrett said, well, sir, first and foremost... Your daughter got hit in the mouth for calling this this woman's son a nigger. But this woman's white. And my mom got a go, little chuckle and she says, I'm not white. I'm just exceptionally light. I have a uh, white grandfather, was I believe what the concept was. No. So it's either a white grandfather or a white grandmother. Whoever her daddy's parent was, one of them was white. Which is why my mom looks white. Which is why I call her premium blend. So, the white people were kind of astonished to see that my mom had a black child. And that's kind of what threw them over the edge. And my mom said, well, hell, if I'd have been in his shoes, I would have punched in the mouth too. Hell, I might have done worse than that. And so, my mom and the family, they had their little discussion with the principal and they went their way. My mom came and got me out of the nervous room because we had to separate and took me home. So, I didn't get a beating that day. You know, I, I was waiting for it. Yeah, you know, I was strongly thinking that mom was going to whoop my ass because I punched this white girl in the mouth because she called me a nigger. But, it didn't work out like that at all. I didn't get an ass whooping. And mama told me that I technically did the right thing, but I should have probably did it in a different manner. I should have went to the teacher and told the teacher that this white girl called me a nigger. And had the teacher not did something the first time, I'm supposed to tell the teacher a second time. If the teacher doesn't do something the second time, well, then a fist in the mouth will probably solve the problem. I skipped all that shit. I went straight for the fist of the mouth. You know? So, you know, I, I don't hit women. You know, nowadays, my policy is if she has a knife, a stick, a rock, a gun, a spoon, a fork, an ink pen, she's no longer a woman, she's a person. But kids, kids are not racist until we make them racist. And that's how I want to end this video. I want you all who are watching and enjoyed that little story. Because it's a true story. Because in the fact uh, there was a race war at Berlin Moran during this shit. And I told you guys this before. Blacks didn't want me on their side because I'm half white. So they thought that I would go tell the white people their plans. In other words, they thought I was Uncle Tom. The whites didn't want me on their side because of the same damn reason. You know, they did think that I was going to go tell the black people their plans. Then by the time we got to fifth grade, found out I was Native American... The, the simple fact was, I was just going to kill both people. Solve that problem. But really, in all jokes aside, you know, um, kids are not racist. You can put any kid of any color, of any gender, in a pool full of kids until one of these damn adults come along and corrupt the kids. Kids are not racist. You can put black kids with white kids. You can put white kids with black kids and Asian kids. Throw in the mix. Throw some Mexicans in the pool. Everybody's going to be fine. As long as it's kids around. And not no dumbass adults. Because we dumbass adults. Yeah, you. I'm looking at you. All of you adults that are watching this video. You. All of you. We are the reason that racism exists. And we can change that shit. By changing your point of view. By realizing that if you stop raising kids to be racist, there won't be any racist. This is Comfort Africa number two. Be seeing.